although we don't stick at signaling uh, 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 without any deviations because they're always ongoing probes, right? rare ongoing probes. If you're willing to talk about stochastic stability, that is, what happens as you let the probes become less and less frequent to take the limit, okay, um, then we can um, lift a restriction that uh, neither uh, that you don't have subsequent or simultaneous probes, um, and you get the result that signaling systems are the only things that have positive probability in the limit as the probes. Well, that's the simplest signaling game, two states, two signals. So we'd like to know how these results general, generalize. Um, reinforcement learning uh, now for N situations and M signals uh, has been largely analyzed um, by um, Yaeli Hu and Pierre Taurus. So uh, we can um, really think about limiting results in terms of a bipartite graph. Uh, we're keeping track of the probabilities that uh, signals uh, are sent in situations. Uh, we've got uh, these probabilities. Uh, we'll just consider graphs where these probabilities are non-zero. So if um, if in a situation, a signal is sent with non-zero probability, the signal will have uh, an edge that goes to that. And there's a key property that we need to state the results about these. Um, property P, each connected component of the graph has just one situation, or a state called state here, or just one signal. And each vertex has an edge, no state or signal. Each state or signal is connected to something. So here's an example of a signaling system. Our situations are at the top. Our signals are at the bottom. Each situation maps onto a unique signal. Um, and of course, you might wonder about the receiver, but the fact that the receiver is reinforced just when the sender does allows the, uh, the, uh, the business to collapse so that we can talk about just this. So that's a signaling system. Uh, but here's something else that uh, uh, satisfies property P. Uh, this exemplifies synonyms and bottlenecks so you see the third situation over maps onto two signals, right? um, and just onto those. So those can be thought of as synonyms for that situation. Um, and the fourth and fifth uh, situations map onto one signal. So it's ambiguous between them. So we call that a bottleneck. Right? So that's an information bottleneck. <coughs> You might have bottlenecks <laughs> imposed artificially if you don't have enough signals, right? But here, this bottleneck is uh, just part of this equilibrium. Okay. Theorem. Uh, if a graph has property P, then reinforcement learning converges to it with positive probability. Um, so signaling systems, synonyms, and bottlenecks all have positive probability in the general case, right? if, if in fact the game allows them. Uh, although um, no information transfer uh, doesn't. Right? And if you go back to the 2 by 2 by 2 game, you can see that no information transfer would violate uh, condition P. OK. That's the story for reinforcement learning. Um, probe and adjust, we have to talk about three different cases. Uh, one in which uh, uh, m equals n, one in which uh, m is greater than n, one in which m is less than n. Okay. 
Uh, if m equals n, the story is just like the simplest case. Um, there are signaling systems. Uh, uh, they're the unique absorbing states. Uh, there's a positive probability path to every signaling system. If there are too many signals, or an excess of signals, then things are a little different. Um, there are no absorbing states, but there are absorbing sets. Right? Um, and these absorbing sets are very nice because, um, because they're efficient, that is. Uh, the information gets across, and the receiver always guesses correctly if you're in this absorbing set. So you still learn to signal with probability one. Here's a little example of one of those absorbing sets. Um, in a simple situation uh, where we have three signals, but only two situations, um, and uh, probe and adjust can lead from A to B, and it can lead from B to A, but it can't lead out of this set. So there are multiple absorbing sets, uh, uh, and they're all efficient, and there's a positive probability path from any state to an absorbing set. What if there are too few signals? Uh, now we have to have uh, information bottlenecks. And what we have now is a big absorbing set of efficient equilibria. Probe and adjust can move you all around this absorbing set. Right? Um, but it can't move you out of it when you get into it. Right? And there's a positive probability path uh, to, uh, from any state to this set. We'll talk about it that. So, in conclusion, um, in the simplest signaling game, both these forms of trial and error learning, quite different, uh, lead to the same result you always learn to see. Uh, uh, in all signaling games, uh, these both forms sometimes learn to signal, but probe and adjust always learns to signal. So, I think this is something Pat might want to say something about. Happy birthday, Pat.